Hello and welcome to Appendix 3 about favourite number 3, the woman who became my favourite number 3, who we have in this book called Sue 3. The purpose of this chapter is to give Western women a good example of the sort of woman a man like me appreciates and likes. Women are not devoid of responsibility in the area of who they are being so as to make themselves an attractive option to a man. It is not enough just to turn up and be female, even though that is what you have been told all your lives. In my online postings, I have often referred to a woman that I have called my fave number three. For the purpose of this chapter, let us call her Sue Three. We met on May Day 2009, exactly one year after I came out of, being, out of my suicidal period, in part because of the kind support of Sue One. <clears throat> C3 was much younger than me and there was never any question that we would be together over the longer term. She had no children and was very committed to having children. Ours was a friendship of mutual benefit that was one of the most delightful experiences of my life. I will recount some of those experiences so that you, dear reader or listener, can listen to what it is that us men want our women to be like. If you are like this woman, you would have a lot of men wanting to marry you and be with you for the remainder of your life. The way that uh, Sue Three and I came to be more than just people who met at a party was recounted in part above. Sue One decided to treat me poorly to test me, as women are wont to do. My response to that test was to step up to being alpha and to find another woman to date. Sue Three was a really nice young woman and so I called her up and organised dinner with her and she accepted the invitation, wondering what this was all about. At dinner, I told her I was looking for another girlfriend who, uh, I was looking for another girlfriend, and she knew about Sue Wan. For, um, for a while, I was, at dinner, I told her I was looking for another girlfriend. She knew about Sue Wan, and for a while, and I did, wondered if there might be some sort of arrangement that we could, uh, where we could both benefit. She thought about it for a while, then said words to the effect, Yes, there is something I want from you. There is something you can do for me that I really want. You can teach me how to be a better wife. She said that. You can teach me how to be a better wife. And I looked at her and said, Excuse me, um, what do you mean by that? And she said, I have a terrible mother. She treated my father very badly. I've never learned what it is to be a good wife. Yes, I know some of the things that men want, but I know what my girlfriends tell me, I know what my boyfriends tell me, but that is not the same as really knowing how to be a good wife. It would be very helpful to me if you could be my practice husband. When, when we are together, we can act like we are married and you can teach me what a man wants from his wife. You can help me find my husband by teaching me these, these things. That's what she said. I was, uh, to say the least, I was very surprised about this. It seemed like a very strange idea. But her stories of how her mother had treated her father made it clear that she never had a good role model for being a wife. Her father had passed away and her brother had, let's just say, problems. She had no one else really to turn to in order to have these sorts of conversations. And so the deal was struck. We would date and she would endeavour to play the part of being a good wife and she would be prepared to learn about how to do better in that role. It was a lot of fun and it was interesting as well. Much of what I talk about in this book uh, we, we talked about, especially around honesty, loyalty, integrity, things like that. She had no idea that there were many aspects of a woman's character that were much more important than her appearance and the more physical things. Here are some examples of our conversations that show how much she was trying to be all that she could be, and it will give you, dear reader or listener, more ideas of what good women, good men value and appreciate about good women. The first time she stayed overnight, she asked me if I would take her through my family photographs on my laptop. I asked her why she wanted to do that, since they were quite personal. She said that she wanted to know more about the man I used to be and, and wanted to know more about my family life. So I agreed to show her the photos I had. We took about three or four hours over this. 
We went back and forth over some of them to get the timeline correct. Eventually she looked at me as only she ever could and said, Peter, you had a lovely family. Your children are so beautiful. I can see from the photos how much you love Jennifer and your children. You had everything I wished for. I want more than anything in the world to have a loving husband like you and maybe two children. A boy and a girl would be perfect. I don't understand how you could look at these photos and not be sad or upset. Uh, you are showing no emotion at all. Why is that? Why is that? What's happening for you? She actually asked me that. And I said, well, I told you, I loved my children more than life itself. And that is why I had to disown them. I told you that I was suicidal when I was disowning them. It was the hardest thing I have ever done. It nearly killed me. So now, when I look at these photos, I do not see my children. I do not even see myself. This is another man. I am no longer that man. I am no longer a father or a husband. I'm completely different now. I do not have any emotion over these photos because it is not me and they are not my children. Do you understand me? And she's looking at me goggle-eyed and went, yes, I do, but you know, if I were to have two children like this and I was to have them taken from me by a bad husband, I do not know how I could possibly survive such a thing. How did you survive Jennifer stealing your children? And I said, I told you, I was suicidal. I survived by no longer being their father. In a very real way, I died. In, in, that, in a very real way, I died in that all I held dear was stolen from me. And so I killed off the man I was to create a new man. Do you understand? And she said, yes, I do. That must have been a very horrible time for you. I hope that one day your children will come back to you and ask to be back in your life. That's what she said. I hope your children come back and ask to be back in your life. And I was incensed. When she said that, I was incensed at her comment. I had made it very clear to her that such a comment would not be acceptable to me. So I said to her in the most stern voice, Sue 3, I, I have told you, I disown these children and I never wish to speak to them again. Your comment is completely unacceptable to me. If you ever say such a thing again, I will get up and walk away or kick you out of my house and I will never speak to you again. Do you understand me? And this shows you the quality of the young woman. She looked at me for about 10 or 15 seconds without saying a word as she composed her reply and then she said I understand I will pray to God and ask him that he touches your heart and the heart of your children I will pray that if it is his will then perhaps you will have a change of heart beautiful it was it was one of the most beautiful things I have ever had said to me you know, I will pray to God and if it is his will, he may touch your heart and you may have a change of heart. But only if it's God's will. It's a beautiful thing that she said to me. And, and what, do, what do Western women say to me? Ah, you're a bastard. You, you disown your children. You're, a, you're the worst father in the world. You're a bastard. They, they swear at me. They call me names. They say all sorts of things. What did this woman say? I will pray for you, and if it is God's will, I hope he will give you a change of heart. If it's his will, then perhaps he will change your heart for you. What a lovely thing to say. Really, what a lovely thing to say. It was one of the sweetest things a woman has ever said to me. It was presented exactly correctly. It was very well done for one so much younger than me. She earned a lot of respect for me in that in that in, in that moment she earned a great deal of respect for me from me. She was wise beyond her years. She had read me exactly correctly and made the perfect comment, something that is not missed by a man such as myself. We later went out to dinner. 
Over dinner, she was drinking a glass of wine and asked me the question. So tell me, what would you do if your son came to you and asked to be back in your life? And I said, I would tell him to get the hell out, out of my life and I wished nothing to do with him. And she said, and if he did not immediately leave? And she was drinking her, then she took a sip of her wine. As she said, and if he did not immediately leave, she started sipping her glass of wine. And I said, then I would beat the living daylights out of him and then tell him again to get the hell out of my life and never come before me again. And she nearly spat her wine out. She looked at me hard and realized that I meant what I said. That if Joshua came before me and did not leave, I really would beat the living daylights out of him and then tell him to leave again. She did not make another comment. She accepted that this was what I would do. And here is how you Western women might like to learn how to act towards your men rather than in the very obnoxious and aggressive ways that you do today. Here's, a, here's an example. This was the nicest day I spent with her. The nicest day I ever spent with Sue Three was the day that England played Germany in the World Cup in 2010. It was one of those days that was simply perfect. It was a Sunday and we planned to stay at the best hotel in Frankfurt called the Villa Kennedy. Our room was a little late being prepared because the hotel had been full on the Saturday night, most likely a summer wedding. Sue Three asked, Sue Three asked me the question I had posted in the first lesson of this book. I had told her that this was a question that she should ask her husband every day. Uh, she was with him, so she was practicing on me. What would you like me to do that, we could, that would have you be happy? She asked me. I looked at her and said, you know, I want to go for a walk by the river with you. So we headed out to the river that runs through the center of Frankfurt. It's only about 100 meters from the hotel. You can look it up on Google Maps. It was a glorious day, full summer sunshine. We found a riverboat to go onto and we had ice cream and iced tea and watched other people strolling on the pathway, the children playing on the grass, the boats going by. It was lovely. We, we sat there and ate ice cream and drank iced tea. It was lovely. And Sue Three recounted stories of her child, childhood growing up in the Czech Republic. She was a very talkative woman. She always had something to say. After an hour or two, we strolled back to our hotel and our room was ready. We dressed to go to the gym and to the pool. We ran on the treadmills for 30 minutes each. She had made up her mind that every time we stayed at the hotel, she would encourage me to use the gym and the pool. One of the things that I had told her was of value to her husband was for his wife to be supportive of him taking care of his health, to encourage him to exercise and praise and reward him for doing so. It shows love and concern for his well-being. So she did. We then swam in the pool for about 30 minutes. She could swim like a fish, which is uh, quite an achievement. Uh, she, she swam like a fish. When we settled in the spa for a bit, uh, going into the sauna to finish our workout. After the sauna, we went upstairs to the rest area and just laid around talking while we cooled down. Once we had cooled, we went back to our room where she decided that she wanted to give me a massage and returned for the lovely afternoon. I, I, had a, I have had a bad back since I was 16 and I am always happy to get a good massage. She was pretty good at it too. By now it was nearing 7pm and it was time to think about dinner. Our room overlooked the courtyard, uh, courtyard restaurant because, and because of the lovely weather, it was starting to fill fast. I noted to her that it would be busy in the restaurant tonight. She suggested, why not ask the staff to serve our meal on our balcony? And that sounded like a great idea. Since Germany had beaten England 4-1, I was pretty sure the German staff would be only too happy to do this for us. So I called down and asked if this would be okay. Could they cater to our balcony table? As expected, this was fine. So then we had, uh, so then we had to decide what we wanted to order. And just here, we'll leave it for a word from one of our sponsors. We'll be back shortly. And thank you for returning. The kitchen was very busy, and so it took about 40 minutes for our meal to arrive. The waiter set out our table in perfect fashion, 
and we proceeded to have the most wonderful of meals. The restaurant was five star, just like the hotel, and the food there was always fabulous. We talked and laughed and talked some more. The sun sank slowly into the evening night sky and eventually the stars slowly appeared in a cloudless sky. We had just the most delightful time. It was one of the nicest dinners I've ever had with anyone. At the end of the dinner, Sue Three told me no one had ever given her a day like this in her life. She said this was the most perfect day she had ever had and thanked me for giving this to her. A woman appropriately thankful for being given such a nice day. Western women sure could learn a lot from her. Jennifer would have found fault at, in such a day and complained and made it my fault. She had done so many times in our travels. Jennifer could find fault and complain about anything. She was very rarely thankful in the last 12 years of our marriage despite the very good lifestyle she lived in that period. Sue Three is a very thoughtful woman. She always asked the right questions and responded appropri appropriately. Never any pushiness or aggression that is so common in Western women. She was impeccably polite all the time. I recall one time she asked me, Peter, why do you take me to the Villa Kennedy to spend our weekends when we could just as easily spend our weekends at my house or your house? Why spend that money when you don't need to? I would be no less happy staying in either of our homes. Very good question. You know, most women don't even bother asking, why are you taking me here? I'd be just as happy staying at home, and she would be. She's a very humble woman. Uh, I told her, Sue Three, you hope to find a husband and have children one day, right? And I wish you success. When you have two small children, you will have to work very hard and you and your husband will have very little money. This is how it is. It was the same for me. When you are in that position, you will go past hotels like the Villa Kennedy and you will say to yourself, I was lucky enough to spend some of the most wonderful weekends of my life in a hotel like that. Now I have something much more important to do. I have my children to raise and I do not miss living in a hotel like that. I have done that. I said to her, when you are much poorer and working much harder, I want you to remember that you had the opportunity to live days like this and not be jealous of those who stay in such hotels and to never regret having your children. And you should have seen the look on her face when I told her this was why I was taking her there. She looked at me deeply in the eyes and just said very simply, thank you. That's all she needed to say. Thank you. She was one to say thank you for everything that was done for her. She was also one to make herself useful. Here's an example of how she made herself useful. One time we went to dinner with a friend of mine. When we arrived at the bar, we found our table and sat down. Sue Three asked my friend and I what we wanted to drink, and we assumed she was going to hail the waitress and order our drinks. Instead, she got up and went to the bar and ordered our drinks and brought them back to our table. I was a bit bemused by this and asked her why it was that she fetched the drinks. That's what the waitresses were there for, after all. And she said, I wanted to make myself useful. My friend laughed, my friend laughed and asked if I could ever imagine Jennifer doing something similar. Of course not. Western women would never fetch drinks for two men she was dining with in a bar. That would be too, too much like oppression or sexist stereotypes, right? A woman fetching two men in a bar drinks. <laughs> Not going to happen in the West, right? She was also a very observant woman and was also always careful to update her opinions of me and presumably of others if she saw, saw something that was not expected. One time we were having our Sunday morning brunch in the courtyard restaurant of the Villa Kennedy. There had been a wedding in the hotel on the Saturday night and the bride and groom were hosting a function in the courtyard for Sunday brunch. As per usual, there were a lot of children running around. A little girl between two and three years of age came over towards our table, so I turned to face her and talked to her and smiled at her. 
She giggled shyly and talked a little and then turned on her, her heel and ran back to her mother. The angle that I was talking to the little girl meant that I could not see the face of Sue 3 as I was talking to the little girl. So when I turned back to face her, she was looking very surprised. She had this look of surprise on her face. And I said, what's up? You look surprised about something. And she said, that little girl liked you and she was happy to talk to you. That's very unusual. Little children, especially little girls, will not usually approach such a big man as you. It is not normal for a little girl to come so close and be so comfortable with a large, strange man like you. And I said, I told you, I'm very good with children. I really like children. I was great with my own children, and I'm great with other people's children as well. And she nodded and she said, yes, I can see that now. I didn't believe you before. You must have been a wonderful father. And I said, I was. I was the best father my former children could possibly ever have had. I think my former children are much worse off for not having a father in their life, but that is their problem now. These are the sort of thoughtful and considerate comments that men very much appreciate from our women. When we are good at something, especially something that we are not expected to be good at, a little acknowledgement of what we are good at and a little praise goes a long way. It goes a long way because it is so rare now. In case you, dear reader or listener, have not noticed, it is now almost unheard of for a woman to acknowledge a man is good at what he is doing, especially being good with children. If a woman praises a man, there is something wrong with her today. Jennifer noted this to me as she was constantly saying good things about me when we were married and she noticed that other women were not happy that she praised me. On the other hand, on the other hand, women are hypercritical of men today in the West. Western women are quite willing to lie about a man in an effort to criticise him. Many men will do the same as well. There is no balance at all in the West with respect to acknowledgement, praise and criticism. The most useless and ineffectual contribution of a female, indeed even actions that are detrimental by a female, will be praised out of all proportion like the woman is a five-year-old struggling to learn to count or write her own name. Women are treated like children when it comes to praising them. Sure, you should praise a five-year-old as they struggle to learn to count and read and write. But praising a grown woman, no matter how bad a job she is doing, is counterproductive. It does not improve the quality of her work. Indeed, it de degenerates it or degrades it. On the other hand, a man who contributes much more than a woman is likely to actually be criticised rather than thanked or praised. Indeed, if a man points out this wide disparity, he is called a woman hater. If a man points out a wide disparity in criticism and praise of men and women for uh, the same thing or very different things, the woman is praised for very little and the man is praised for doing a great deal, this is enough to be called a woman hater in the West. Because obviously women should be unjustly praised for their ineffectual efforts, while men are criticised no matter what they do. That's what happens in the West. I'm constantly criticised in the West. I've committed no crimes and done nothing wrong, yet, and I've done great good, yet I'm constantly criticised. This woman, Sue Three, was one who believed in making sure good work was praised no matter who did it. She was easily the sweetest and most charming woman I have ever met in my life. She found, by the way, she found that prospective husband, and last I heard, all was going well for them. I truly wish them well. He's a lucky man. The man who landed that woman, he's a lucky man. So I just wanted to include this chapter on Sue 3, uh, praising her and pointing out here are some of, the thing, some of the things that she did to learn how to be a better wife. And many of the things I talk about in this book, we talked about during the uh, 12 months we dated. I told her all these things about how to be a good wife. And she listened and she learned and she said, that makes a lot of sense. And she was totally bemused in the idea that Western women weren't interested in doing these things and learning how to be a good wife. She was totally bemused by that. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much for listening.